My name is David Day of Today Photographic Art, and I'd like to welcome you to my video workshop on intentional camera movement when vegetation is the subject matter. If you are new to intentional camera movement in the studio, I'd like you to look up my wire ICM video because that video goes into great detail about what it takes to produce a good ICM photograph in the studio. Many techniques between wire and vegetation ICM photography are similar, but there are a number of differences that need to be taken into account to get good photographs of plants. Plants have a lot more opacity and they diffuse light differently than wires do. The surfaces between wires and plants are quite different and when it comes to plants you get a lot more color variation in different areas of the stem or the vine and this is going to require some technique adjustments to get right whenever you're doing an ICM photograph with a vegetation as a subject matter. Let me give you an example of what I mean. When we're looking at uh, wires, we have a lot of, like with this blue wire, we have a lot of surface consistency in the wire. If we look at the wire here, or we look at the wire here, it looks to be the same wire. So there's not a lot of differences we need to make in terms of approach to this wire to photograph it. But when it comes to parts of plants, vines, stems, leaves, bark, and so on and so forth. When we look at it, there is a lot of variation in the consistency of the plant, in this case a stem of a sawtooth plant. You see here there are a lot of reds in it, there are some nodes, there are some yellows and greens and whites, and uh, places where it's a little bit broken and there are little protrusions sticking off of it. Sometimes these things have uh, hairs on them, sometimes they have thorns on them, and all of that needs to be taken into consideration to get a good photograph when using intentional camera movement photography. That sometimes is very different than what you would do with wire photography. Also, when it comes to wires, particularly those that have a solid core, it's very easy to position this wire and it will maintain its position so you can photograph it. But when it comes to plants, plants seem to have a memory. So when they are newly harvested and they've got, still got a lot of water in them, they seem to want to spring back to the shape they were in when you harvested them. And then when they get brittle, they get, or they get dry, they get very brittle, and they break easily when you try to bend them. And again, they are hard to position just the way you want them to position them. Another thing that needs to be taken into consideration, particularly when photographing leaves, is that the opacity is going to dramatically change with just small shifts of the lighting on that uh, leaf. So that's going to require a difference in, a difference in the technique and approach to photographing photographing that leaf and getting a good result. All of these things we've talked about now need to be considered when transitioning from wire to vegetation photography. And that's what we're going to cover in this video. And hopefully it's going to be of some value to you when you begin to photograph plants using intentional camera movement techniques. This is the frame for the box that I use for my ICM images. It's made of wood that I obtained from a local hardware store. It's approximately four feet long by three feet high by two and a half feet deep. The wooden panels have a number of holes drilled in them as well as fasteners attached to them so that I can suspend various pieces of vegetation inside the box when making ICM images. As you can see here, I have a string attached from one side of the box to the other, and I have several paper clips attached to it. And that allows me to suspend various pieces of vegetation inside the box when I'm making ICM images. The frame is covered with pieces of black cloth that I obtained from a local fabric store. I have a piece of cloth on the base of the box which can be removed because sometimes I want to bounce light off of the base into the subject that I am creating an ICM image of. Also, you can see that there are some open areas in the box that aren't covered by cloth. 
when using a wide angle lens such as a fish eye, that can create some really interesting effects in the corner of the image that tend to frame the piece that you're trying to photograph and make an ICM image out of. The lamp that I use to illuminate my subject is a typical 25 watt lamp with a homemade cardboard snooker attached to it. That allows me to focus the light on the subject matter while maintaining a dark background courtesy of the cloth that is draped over the frame of the box. I didn't cover the lenses that I use in ICM photography to any great extent in the first video, so I want to talk about them a little bit right now. During the course of creating this video, most of the images that I shot were with the new Venus Optics 10mm cookie lens. It's uh, not a fisheye lens, it's just a regular 10mm wide-angle lens, and I really like it. When I stop it down to about f8, it gives me a nice uh, gives me a nice image, but it's a little bit softer than other lenses, so if I'm going after a soft feel, that's a lens that I reach for. Another lens that I use quite often is the Rokinon 12mm. It's not a fisheye either, it's just a very wide angle lens, and I tend to use that if I want a crisper, sharper image. Then there's the Lens Baby Circular Fisheye. That's a really great lens if you want the frame around the around the image that I was talking about earlier, and I'll give you an example of that one in just a minute here. And uh, all I can say about lenses is you've got to experiment with different lenses. I found that all these lenses will produce uh, quite a different effect when used in an ICM setting, so you have to spend some time and effort uh, experimenting with your lenses, and what you may learn is that you have more than one lens that you like whenever you're doing ICM photography. Let's take a brief look at some of the pieces of vegetation that I've used for ICM photographs. Let's start off right here with the vampire vine. This is a vampire vine right here, a very interesting plant in that its root system will combine with the root systems of other plants and it's very, very difficult to eradicate. A piece of a dewberry vine, which is related to the blackberry. A piece of sawgrass a piece of bark from a crepe myrtle tree, a piece of pampas grass, and these nodes where the leaves connect to the stalk or stem are very, very interesting when photographed, and you can notice the striations in color there. It goes from a little bit of red to yellows to greens. A new one for me, which I'm going to try today, which is a piece of birch bark this one's a real challenge right here, but it's a lot of fun too. It's an elephant's ear. And of course we have here the Morning Glory, which we harvested a little earlier today. Another piece of sawgrass. And a piece of a blackberry vine with thorns on it that we're going to look at. So that's some of the things that I've used. Of course, you can uh, choose whatever you want to out in the field. Uh, there are just an endless variety of plants to choose from to make ICM photographs. Okay, let's talk about some of the specific plants now and some of the things that I've found that can be used to your benefit or can be a pitfall in making good ICM photographs in the studio. Let's start out with blackberry. First off, be very, very careful with the blackberry because they contain a lot of thorns. And if the light hits those thorns just right, they can create some really interesting light trails that can either add to or destroy a photograph. One of the things that's true of all of these vines and stems and twigs and so on and so forth is you want to carefully remove a lot of the leaves because you're going to find that leaves very quickly in an ICM image can create a lot of distraction. They can create a lot of blurs and so on and so forth. But judiciously used, the leaves can do a really great job at uh, creating a good ICM. So on this blackberry vine, I'm going to trim off all, I don't want to leave that piece of the stem there, 
trim off all of the leaves but the one on the very end. Then I'm going to suspend it in my light box and focus the light so that it is hitting the stem and a little bit of the leaf but nothing else. And that will give me a good black background to make this image really pop. English Ivy also makes a really good ICM candidate. It uh, has a vine or a stem that's got a lot of character to it. It's got a lot of uh, color in it uh, from yellows to browns to reds to greens. And again, with most of these ICM images, I strip off pretty much all of the leaves except maybe a few on the very, very tip. And it's really interesting too, when you strip these leaves off, that creates a broken area on the vine. And you can see all of these little green places here where I've broken the, vine, broken the leaves off of the vine. And that will create a lot of striations in the image when you do an ICM. And like I do with all of them, I'm going to hang them in the box. And then I'm going to adjust the light so that I'm a little bit on the leaf, primarily on the, primarily on the vine or the stem of the vine. And then I'm going to do my ICM following the contour of the vine. And then do it in reverse. And I get some really good images doing that. Leaves are one of the biggest challenges I have found in making ICM photographs. And this is a dried tulip poplar leaf. And you can see here that uh, it, uh, there we go, it uh, is fairly opaque. And if you adjust the light so it hits it just right, so you're shooting into this area of opacity while you have the edge of the leaf lit, you can gain some really good ICM photographs. Let's see what happens here. There we go. Oh, look at the striations in that. And then you can adjust the light a little bit again and play around with it until you get to where you want and then just shoot it quite a few times. You always want to shoot more than just one or several of these because when you get them into the computer you're going to find things in it that you don't like and stuff that you didn't expect that you would like is going to show up. So make quite a few photographs and that looks pretty good right there. I'm going to go with that one, make a few shots of that and then I'm going to process it out in Photoshop a little later. The elephant ear is a very fun and challenging leaf to photograph in ICM. I've got this one just about where I want it with the light so that I've got the elephant ear folded a little bit so I'm going to catch some of this back side plus I'm going to catch some shadows in the green area on the front side and I want to have the light focused so it's primarily just on the edge of this plant right here and that's the area that I'm going to focus on. So let's see what happens. And as you can see, right off the bat, I got a really nice photograph of the elephant's ear. One of the things that you have to be aware of and watch really closely is that you're not overexposing this area of the photograph. You want to underexpose the whole thing just a little bit because you don't want this area to blow out when you make your ICM photograph. The various grasses are amongst my favorite images to photograph. And here I've got just two pieces of grass. And again, you want to keep your elements simple when you're doing ICM photography because just a few elements can fill up your frame rather quickly. And I like this grass because it's got a nicely defined edge that's uh, going to create some uh, great seed pods. 
and a couple of uh, protrusions of very, very small leaves that uh, will look very nice in the ICM photograph if I can catch it just right. So I'm going to mount that in my light box. Make sure that these two pieces of grass are separated a little bit. Focus the light so it's on the subject just where I want it. And then take a couple of photographs. Ah, and right away I've got something that looks very promising, so I'll make a couple of shots of that and look at it a little bit later in Photoshop. Even just a plain old twig that falls off of a tree can be used for ICM photography with some pretty good results. This is an old pine tree twig. It's got a little bit of fungus growing on it. It's got a couple of nodes, a little bend in it, a little protrusion here. And when I put that in the light box and focus the light on it, I can get some really good ICM images that have a lot of striations and flare to them. So we'll go up here and do that one. And right away, we can see that we've got some really interesting stuff going on in there. Refocus the light so I'm down here at the tip of it. And let it go, and you can see the, some of the striations that are occurring there. So don't forget to just pick up some random twigs while you're out collecting items to photograph. first thing we have to do in getting ready to do an ICM of vegetation is find a great candidate to photograph. And here I found a really nice morning glory. I'm not too interested in the flower on here because flowers tend to not paint well when doing ICM when you're also shooting vines. So I'm going to clip this vine off right above the flower. And this is a great candidate because it's got a little bit of a kink in it and it's about 10 inches long and if you look very closely at it it has some areas that are red some areas that are yellow and other areas that are green these tend to these differences in colors tend to make some really good striations whenever you're doing ICM photography so that's one of the things that I look at I'm not too much interested in the flowers on this vine maybe just one or two of them and they're the flower pods they haven't emerged as to fully bloom flowers yet and cut most of them off and leave maybe one on the end to get a little bit of green painting and likewise do the same on the other end where it shoots out on this little extension to the vine. The other thing that I find very interesting about a lot of the vines is if you look at them very very closely they have little hairs on them and those little hairs tend to diffuse the lighting so that you get this really soft striation effect whenever you pass the camera across that vine. So here again we've got a good candidate. We're going to take this one back to the studio, string it up into the dark box, and see what happens when we photograph it. Okay, let's take a look now at the morning glory vine that we collected outside. I'm going to position it relative to the light. And one of the things that you can't see on this vine is on the vine itself there are thousands of very, very small white hairs coming off of the vine. And what happens with these is they get, uh, they diffuse the light that's coming off of your light source and they will create some very interesting and soft flares if you can, uh, or soft striations if you can catch them just right. So I've got this mounted, I've got the light just about where I want it, get it off of this one leaf on the bottom here a little bit and up into this crook because I want to accentuate that. And let's take a couple of photographs and see what happens. Oh, that looks pretty good right there. And I'm really catching that light in this vine. So I'm going to take a number of pictures of that and then I'm going to take it to Photoshop and see what happens. I went through the photographs of the morning glory vine that I took this morning and found one that I really liked. And I imported that into Adobe Photoshop now I want to mention here that you don't have to do this the way that I am doing. Everybody's got their own technique and 
process and post-processing. Some people use Photoshop. Some people stay in Lightroom. Some people use ON1 or a variety of different software packages out there. I personally like Photoshop. I've been using it for a long time and I'm very familiar with it at this point. So that's why I'm doing this in Adobe Photoshop. But anyhow, the first thing that I do is I go into my camera raw filter to make my gross adjustments to this image. And from here, I'm going to increase the exposure a little bit because what I want to do is start to bring out these darker areas and get into a little bit of this striation pattern that's occurring here as a consequence of all those little white hairs that are coming off of the morning glory vine. Uh, the light uh, gets diffused very nicely by those hairs and can create some very nice striation patterns. I'm also starting to see some purple in there that I didn't notice before. Then I'm going to add a little bit of uh, contrast to it. And I'm going to take away from the highlights because I had a little bit of a blowout in here for, on the vine. Maybe adjust the shadows a little bit to bring some of this background up. Then I'm going to give it some texture and improve the clarity a bit on it. And you can see already that that's looking pretty good with the gross adjustments. And I'm going to actually take away a little bit of the haze in this photograph. Okay. Now that's looking fairly good. Now I can go into my finer adjustments. I'm going to go into the brightness and contrast. Add a little bit of brightness to it. You can see those striation patterns are continuing to go up. <clears throat> Maybe adjust the contrast a little bit. And from there go into levels. I found levels to be a really, really good tool, particularly in the midtones. If I take the midtones and open them up a bit, I can really get to the place where I start to take that image and melt it into the background. Now, sometimes that will generate some noise in the background that I won't, won't want to have in the final image. I don't think you'll be able to see this in the video, but I've got a little bit of noise here, a little noise here, and some noise down here that I want to get rid of. There are several ways of dealing with that. The first thing I can do is I can go up here and grab my lasso tool and highlight that area and then do a content aware fill. Or I can use the rubber stamp tool. Or in the case of just minor noise that's going on, I can take my dark tones and compress them just a little bit and it will get rid of that noise for me, which is what I have done here. Okay, that's looking pretty good. The next thing I want to do is I want to add a little bit more detail into this striation pattern here. So I'm going to go into Filter, Sharpen, on Sharp Mask. And here I'm going to add anywhere from 70 to 100% sharpening with a radius of somewhere between 7 and 10 pixels. And that's looking pretty good. The last thing that I want to do with this image is I want to go into the filter and I want to activate Topaz Labs Denoise. And what this piece of software will do is it will take out the noise that's in the image as a consequence largely of processing it and sharpening it. And you can see here we have the before and the after Topaz. Very nice piece of software. I hit apply. And that quickly, I have my final image. Now, one other thing I want to mention in here, you can see the nice striations that came out here, is this green area right here. This green area is the consequence of that one little leaf that I left at the end of the vine. And that's why I recommend taking off all but one or two leaves out of these pictures, because if you leave multiple leaves, the uh, image is going to get cluttered very, very quickly. So that's basically what I do. And this image is ready to get saved and uploaded to one of several websites that I use.
So I hope you've enjoyed my video on ICM photography for vegetation matter. A sign of a good ICM session is when you've got a lot of materials to clean up. And oh yes, by the way, one last comment I'd like to make and suggestion on ICM video when bringing things in from outside the house. Make sure you've cleared your materials of all the creepy crawlies before you bring them in. Oh wow, that was a big one. <laughs>